Hey guys, we are here today in the 2019 Genesis G70. We have a two liter turbo, a six speed manual transmission, and look at this, a mechanical handbrake. I've been driving this car for a few days and I've developed some thoughts and opinions on what it's like to live with, what it's like to drive, and um, there's some good and some bad. Let's get into it. So first of all, I love the way this thing looks. The interior is laid out really well and it looks really sharp. When I got into this car, all the buttons, everything was pretty much where I expected it to be. There's not a whole lot of a learning curve when you get into a, a Genesis or a Hyundai or a Kia, and I really like that. It's almost immediately familiar. Uh, you have buttons and knobs for pretty much everything. The touchscreen is easy to reach and uh, pretty intuitive to use. There's a nice place down here to slot your phone. I have an iPhone A7 Plus and uh, with a case, it fits in there perfectly. Apple CarPlay, all that good stuff. You have four different drive modes, Custom, Sport, Comfort, Eco, which are all easily accessible here, as well as a traction control button. You can turn everything off in this car and hoon a little bit, which is pretty awesome. Smallish little center console compartment and a little glove box there. Place to put your sunglasses up here a massive vanity mirror that works so nice interior I have a good driving position a mechanically adjustable steering wheel which is very good um, these seats are very comfortable we have a nice looking key fob here kind of a rubberized coating we'll leave that in here so the car doesn't beep when we go outside now, I do apologize, five, 10 minutes ago, this car was absolutely gorgeous and clean, and we have a lot of salt on the roads today, so it kind of looks a little bit crummier than it should. But overall, that aside, I love the way this Genesis G70 looks. The proportions are just right. It's a front engine, rear wheel drive sedan, and it looks it. It's, it's kind of aggressive and sporty, but also mature. I really, really do like the way this thing looks twin exhaust tips on one side there just kind of cool rear haunches almost bmw-esque pr proportions and design language there's kind of a spring-loaded trunk in the back not the biggest area in the back here to, to put things you do have some storage down here um, i would one complaint that i do have is i would like to see some way to fold down the rear seats from the back. To do that, you have to go into the back seat and uh, operate the controls from there. It's not the longest loading space, so if you have something that's a little bit longer, you're gonna have to fold those seats down. It's kind of annoying to get back there. Another annoyance is closing this trunk. You either have to put your hand on the top or um, I'll clean off the reverse camera there. Really swing it hard to get it down there. It works though once you get used to it. In the back seat, I think there's enough room back here. I've set the, um, I've set my driving position in the front seat for my liking. I'm five foot ten. I think you could easily fit someone back here who's around six foot up front and in the back without any issues. You have a couple little cargo nets there. It's pretty comfortable back here. Not a lot with uh, features. There's just a, US, a single USB port and uh, this massive Monroney that Genesis gave me. <laughs> so some basics on this car, 255 horsepower, 260 pound feet of torque. I've heard a couple discrepancies on horsepower numbers, 252, 250. The Monroney says 255, so that's what I'm gonna go with. 38,895 including destination. Not a bad price for what this is. And, uh, you know, it's it's about the same as its competitors price-wise. But it's the only car in its class that offers the manual transmission, which is pretty awesome. Let's talk a little bit about ergonomics and kind of what this car has been like to live with here these last few days. So. 
Reverse camera is great. I do like the turning lines. There's no 360 camera in this kind of base model manual car, but you do get this mechanical handbrake, which is fantastic. Um, going into Apple CarPlay, pretty traditional setup. It's nice and responsive. This Lexicon sound system sounds really good. We're gonna be doing an audio test a little bit later on the highway. So stay tuned for that. Be sure you're wearing your, your headphones for binaural audio. We have these drive modes, custom, sport, comfort, eco. It might be a little bit hard to see in the daylight, but sport turns the gauge cluster red, comfort is clear and eco is green. Custom is purple, which isn't my favorite color, um, but honestly, I've pretty much been driving this the most in comfort. Sport mode tends to get a little bit lurchy uh, and I haven't really touched eco mode yet. I do have a complaint about the climate control system. Auto just doesn't quite do what I want and it seems to be really loud all the time. Even when the car's warmed up, uh, it's just blowing a lot of air and it's loud. Um, so I've been overriding everything, kind of doing my own settings. Luckily that's easy to do. You can control where the air is pointing by cycling through your options with this button. And here's your fan speed. Um, no heated steering wheel on this, and I've had some trouble getting the vents to aim towards my hands. It seems like the air just blows just a little bit outside of that proximity. Um, still though, once everything warms up, you can, uh, you can be pretty comfortable in here. And I've noticed this car does warm up very quickly. Within a mile driving down the road, I've got hot air blowing out of the vents. Fantastic. Heated and cooled seats, which work well. Um, yeah, just great Hyundai ergonomics. I can actually see the start-stop button, so I don't have to like guess where it is uh, visually. Nice volume controls on the steering wheel. While we're stationary here, I want to talk about this a little bit. So you have... Uh, you go into the user settings and you have lots of different things that you can change, doors, lights, convenience settings, all that. But I would really like when I'm cycling through these options to not have to press the OK button every time I want to select something. On this side of the steering wheel, you have a volume uh, up and down knob that if you press it, it'll mute the sound system. I'd like that pressing ability on this side too. It'd be, it would just be really nice and convenient. I know they have to balance out the buttons and everything, but... Uh, that's just a minor little gripe that I have. You have miles per hour, drive info, accumulated info, fuel economy, just some basic information there. Um, I've been getting decent gas mileage with this. I've been kind of hustling it the last few days and I've averaged around 22, 23 miles to the gallon. Uh, I don't think you'd have any problem matching the EPA ratings, which are, as I consult the massive Monroney, 28 highway, 18 city. That seems right on the money. I haven't mentioned yet that we have a limited slip differential on the back, and I think that's awesome because this car handles incredibly well and that limited slip just makes it even better. If this were an open diff, it would be a little bit of a disappointment. All right, well, I think that pretty much covers all the ergonomics and stuff here. Um, you have your lane keep assist here, which works really well. No radar guided cruise control because this is the manual transmission car. Okay, let's take this thing for a drive. Really light clutch uptake. I do like the steering wheel. This car just feels the right size. It's a nice, it's a nice amount of space in the cabin. It feels like you're in something sporty. And it doesn't sound too bad either. You have three settings for your engine sound. So you can go into here, go into vehicle, active engine sound. There's off, minimized, normal, and enhanced. Off is just pretty quiet. Normal sounds like this. Enhanced sounds like this. Pretty subtle difference between all of them, but I like normal. I think it sounds good. Let's talk a little bit about this shifter, because that's kind of the question that I had when I first got, got into this car. How is it? What does it feel like? Is it good? Is it worth buying over the automatic? 
I'm in a little bit of a quandary with this. I think in principle, it's amazing that this comes in a six speed manual with a limited slip diff. That's awesome. This two liter turbo is okay. It's a little bit funky in its power delivery sometimes. There's, there's quite a bit of turbo lag, about a second of lag between plopping down the throttle and getting boost. Um, but it's a decent amount of power. Between shifts, that turbo lag is pretty present in that you can't quite get back on the power quickly again. So there's a little bit of lurchiness, and this is kind of a hard transmission to drive smoothly. I noticed from a stop, there's always, no matter how you let out the clutch, how smooth you are, how good you are driving stick, there's always just a little bit of a lurch that pushes you forward when you let out the clutch. It's almost like there's just no torque there, and then the power kicks in. So it's a little bit sloppy of a gearbox, and when it's cold, it's very clunky. Uh, it feels kind of base model bargain bin. When it warms up, things, uh, things improve a lot. It's not a bad transmission, but it's not a great manual transmission. Part of that may be due to the round shift knob. Um, I've never really been a fan of big round shift knobs. I feel like if it were a little smaller, that might feel better. But that's always something you can change out. It's not a big deal. Overall, I'd say the manual is good, but honestly, if manufacturers are going to be putting manual transmissions in cars, I want them to be awesome and to be a really big sell over the automatics. For me, this unit ultimately isn't. It's a little bit more of a, in principle I love it, in practice, meh, I could take it or leave it. If I wanted a really, really good manual transmission comfortable daily mature car I'd go get a GTI or a Golf R for me this isn't quite the sell I haven't driven the other Genesis G70 models so I don't really have a lot to compare I assume the 3.3 liter twin turbo is amazing uh, the automatic is awesome I'm sure the automatic is probably pretty good in this 2 liter turbo as well so you know if you really want a manual transmission in your G70 uh, you can't go wrong. It's not bad, but keep your expectations in check. It's not, you know, Genesis's gift to driving enthusiasts. Um, there are some flaws. Luckily, it is easy to rev match. Pedals are positioned perfectly for heel and toe. And where this car really shines is in the handling department. This thing just absolutely rocks around the corners. I love it. While we're here, let's show off that limited slip differential. With uh, traction control on, you can't do that apparently, which makes sense. Luckily, you can turn everything off. It's kind of hard to drift this car because of the turbo lag. By the time you get into the throttle, you straightened out, and uh, then the turbo kicks in, but you're already in a straight line. And it's 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 a safe rear-wheel drive car with a limited slip in that respect. But it's so well balanced. Let's hit some corners up here, and uh, we'll show you guys what that's all about. We are on winter tires out here, so handling is going to be a little bit more muted than usual. They are performance Pirelli winter tires and they should still do the job. Show you guys some shift action here. I'm just asking for a little bit more refinement from this manual from Genesis because I know they can do it. I know. The Elantra GT N line is good. I know the Veloster N is amazing. They can make good manual transmissions. I just want a little bit more involvement, a little bit more engagement in that shift linkage. Right now it's a little bit plasticky, a little bit rubbery. You do have a good amount of torque low down. Sixth gear, 60 miles an hour, put your foot down. A second later you get a decent amount of pull and shove. I mean, it's a two liter turbo. It drives like a two liter turbo. It sounds like a two liter turbo. They're on 
honestly isn't a ton of variation in these engines. All right, turn in, super sharp. A little bit of understeer there because it's wet. I love the dynamics of this chassis. It's just a really, really nicely poised car. Virtually no problems with ride quality. It's very comfortable. It rides awesome even on these 19 inch wheels. Um, and handling dynamics are just super sharp. It's really fun to drive around the corners. I heard some people complaining about rev hang. I haven't really noticed it. Um, it's not a big deal. My issue is just with the turbo lag between gears. Let's talk about brakes here really quickly. On winter tires, on slightly greasy surfaces, I feel like ABS is kicking in a little bit early for me, but it's really hard to judge. Pedal fuel otherwise is very good, and I'm sure these Brembos have a ton of stopping power. Let's do a little, uh, little zero to 60 here while we have, yeah, ABS just kicking in super early. Second gear will top out with a soft rev limiter at about 63 miles an hour. All right, guys, let's see how this thing does around the corners here. heel toe into second. I will say this thing is so easy to control on the limit. It does pull nicely. There's just that turbo lag between gears. You can just get those, uh, get those exhaust pops and that turbo continuing to spool like the Veloster N, oh man, we'd be in business. So, getting onto the highway. Great visibility. We have really nice blind spot monitoring systems. No annoyances like the CX-5 I had last week. It tells you when someone's in your blind spot, when you've passed someone, when you're approaching. You know the deal. We're sitting at just about, I don't know, 2,700 RPM at 75 miles an hour. Kick it down to 70. And we're about 2,500 RPM. Decent amount of pull in sixth gear. There's a little bit of wind noise from the mirrors and above the roof, but otherwise this car is very silent. Um, I have a little decibelometer app on my phone, and I think it was reading around 65 to 67 decibels. Pretty good. Uh, it's very quiet, very comfortable in here. No complaints on that front. Let's go into the sound system and uh, see what this thing sounds like with this lexicon at speed. Good. You can, I don't know if you noticed earlier, but I accidentally muted the volume for a split second. It's easy to do with this volume control over here, but luckily we have nice knobs too. Same with tuning. I have noticed a little bit of a lag when you're tuning between Sirius XM stations, but other than that, their screen is actually pretty responsive. Let's change to our next track here.
a good sound system, no real complaints. It's clear, there's not a lot of noise on the highway in this car, so it's very easy to hear what you're listening to. Yeah, good marks. slide. You can't slide. It's alright. We haven't really gone into sport driving mode. Um, it's, you know, it kind of stiffens up the steering a little bit, increases your throttle response. In my experience, it's been a little bit lurchy and rough this week. Uh, throttle uptake tends to be kind of a little bit more aggressive than I would like, so I've pretty much just left it into comfort. I do like the lane keep assist. It does a really good job keeping you centered in the lanes. I do wish though it were just a little bit easier to see so I wouldn't have to move my head over to see where the button is. Um, but it's a really nice system, works quite well. I've found myself using it quite a bit, especially when I need to just quickly fiddle with something here on the screen. Um, unfortunately with the manual transmission, no radar guided cruise control. That's really hard to do with manual transmission because if you have to slow down a lot and you're in sixth gear and the engine stalls, that's just a problem. Maybe someday they can come up with a solution where it pops into neutral, but then you have no power. So it's just, it's kind of a conundrum. And someday it may actually spell the end of the manual transmission if uh, all these systems become mandated. So uh, little note, be happy that this exists still. And uh, there may be some solutions that do come out for that, but for now it's, it's a little bit of a problem. So um, how can I sum up the Genesis G70. I think this is a good good place to kind of wrap things up a little bit. You know, this is a nice car. It's not a great car from a driver's perspective, but it's well-rounded. Everything's laid out really well. It's comfortable. It's decently fast. It has a manual, which is cool. You feel a little bit special driving it for that reason. But don't get too wrapped up in the sex appeal of this having a manual and a limited slip diff. The dynamics of the handling are phenomenal, but the drivetrain leaves a little bit to be desired, in my opinion. Um, this isn't as sweet and engaging as I was as I would like it to be. It needs a little bit more refinement, ultimately. And um, this transmission does feel a little bit clunky and a little bit a little bit cheap. I would like just slightly more quality from this unit. That said though, I mean, this is the base model. You are missing out on some features. Ultimately, would I sacrifice it for the automatic? Probably. If I wanted a G70, honestly, this manual isn't good enough to really convince me over the automatic transmission car. Um, it's a little bit difficult to drive smoothly, smoothly, and part of that has to do with the tuning. Um, but there are some pros to it. You have control over your own gears. Uh, it's just, it's a nice, it's a nice thing to drive. The traction control system isn't too intrusive, but the ABS seems to be a little bit intrusive, at least today on in the wet and uh, the salty roads. So, pros and cons, as always. I think um, I'm curious to see how I'll feel about this car by the end of the week. And, uh, you know, opinions change over time. You know, you get into a car, Im immediately I didn't like this at all. I just thought, oh, I don't know about this. But the more I drove it, the more I kind of began to appreciate it and uh, realized that it's not a bad daily driver. There are just some little niggles and complaints that I have. Uh, ultimately, I think a lot of people are just going to buy the automatics, and that's fine. I wish manufacturers, when they put a manual in a car, they make it a good manual so that people will be more incentivized to buy it and keep it going. I think, you know, I've seen this from a few manufacturers in recent years where they throw a manual transmission into something almost just for the novelty of it, and um, they don't really make it a quality unit, and I'd like to see that change. No idea what this semi-truck is doing in the left lane. But otherwise, we have a really nice, well-balanced, smaller-sized luxury sedan. Um, so anyway, guys, what are your thoughts? There's been a few reviews out on this car already. 
Um, would you buy this over the Kia Stinger, over the comparable Mercedes BMW counterparts? Um, anyway, let me know in the comments your thoughts. Let me know if you have any questions, anything you want me to cover later on this week. Until then, we'll see you later. Thanks for watching. Take care.